Aloha. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's October the 7th. That can mean only one thing. It's Trump week. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And uh, today's title is I understand COVID now at last with 211,000 dead. You know, March 6th, 2020, Donald Trump made his infamous visit for the first time to the CDC. And when he was with um, CDC personnel, he said the following, I like this stuff. I really get it. People are really surprised I understand this stuff. Every one of these doctors say, how do you know so much about this? And Donald Trump then said, maybe I have a natural ability. Let's fast forward to this last Sunday, October the 4th. On Sunday, he made a video. And when I heard this, uh, this video, I thought by somehow I was watching a Charles Dickens um, novel play out where the, the COVID science uh, spirit of past, present, and future made a visitation to Donald Trump during the night. And Donald Trump somehow became the new Ebenezer Scrooge that was transformed to really understand COVID, to really be now the, you know, the, the cheerleader that he likes to be with COVID and make it and take it seriously. So he said this in his video, I learned by really going to school. This is the real school and I get it and I understand it. And it's very interesting. It's a very interesting thing and I'm going to let be letting you know about it. So when I heard that video, I go, oh, maybe Donald does understand it. Well, not so much. About 20 minutes later, Donald Trump got into his, his vehicle that's airtight with three circuits, uh, Secret Service uh, personnel. He wore only a cloth mask and he paraded around the streets waving to his loyal followers. And then he went back to the hospital, literally infected to the nostrils with the COVID virus. And he put his uh, three servicemen at risk to do this. So did he understand COVID? Does he get it? Does he get it when he um, took off the mask at the front of the White House steps where he's uh, weaving back and forth and his chest is heaving as he's trying to desperately get oxygen into his mouth? Does he get COVID-19 when he uh, goes in the front door of the White House with no mask on uh, and does two video takes? Does he understand it? Does he understand COVID when he says, don't be afraid of COVID, don't let it dominate your life? Does Donald Trump understand COVID really when he says it's no more than a flu? He said that on October the 6th. Once again, he's comparing it to the flu, forgetting his own words that he told Bob Woodward that uh, it's more deadlier than a, a strenuous flu. Uh, his comments were so egregious that uh, Facebook had to pull it from, uh, from, his, from his feed and Twitter had to flag it. Mm. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guests today. I'd like to welcome Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Winston Welch, and Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Welcome, everybody. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh -huh. Jay, let me go to you because you know it's been a heck of a week um, since last Friday. Uh, you know when Donald Trump was diagnosed with COVID. Uh, out of the last week or so, what do you find to be the most offensive? What is the most offensive thing you've witnessed just in the last seven days? Yeah, the return of his uh, psychopathy. Uh, at least when, when he was in uh, the, the, the ambulance in the hospital, you know, you, you couldn't see his psychopathy come out. And as soon as he gets back uh, into the White House, there it is again, in case you forgot. And uh, your reference to Charles Dickens is good, but I think the reference to Frankenstein is better. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I tried, I tried for every day that he was, you know, sick, uh, thinking, um, could I please have kind thoughts about this man? Because if one human being is sick, you know, the natural instinct is to empathize. Uh, uh, one sick person, um, you know, is a threat to every one of us. Um, but, you know, as hard as I tried, Tim, I could not empathize. And furthermore, I could not imagine anyone else empathizing after what he has done. Um, you know, he has effectively um, caused the deaths of over 200,000 people. I can't empathize with him. And then he comes out, you know, and, and the very first thing he does 
uh, is he, he stops the negotiations. Talk about, you know, it, does the president have the power to, to stop the negotiations between two, two houses of Congress? And yet there you have it again, you know, a sole proprietorship government. Nobody matters but him. And he announces that those negotiations for another CARES Act are going to stop, you know, effectively freezing millions and millions of people out of further benefits when they are desperate for further benefits. And that is the worst possible thing he could have done. He had pushed back about it and he relented to a limited degree, a very limited degree. Uh, you know, but the bottom line is that was as mean as it gets. So he hasn't learned anything, Tim, not a thing. In fact, he's worse. He's Frankenstein back among us, just like in the reality show. What to be done about it? Um, you know, do you think the administration now takes a more serious tone about uh, the necessity of wearing masks? Uh, we still don't have a, a national plan, so I doubt we're going to see that because we only have 30 days left before the election. So forget a national plan at this point. We're going to have to probably wait till hopefully Joe Biden is the new the next president. But um, does he does he or his administration that half of them are, are quarantined because uh, they're they they've contracted the 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 virus? Do do we get serious about masks in society here? Yeah, well, you know, you'd think we would. You really would think that. But I think it's going to be back to business as usual, showing showing everybody, uh, you know, how strong and, and confident and crazy he is. Uh, he's probably not going to be pushing on masks. My guess is he'll make public appearances without masks. It's already indicated that he will, um, you know, at the second debate. I think that's what's going to happen. And the bottom line is he's back where he was, uh, strengthened by his experience and not made more thoughtful, not made more, more kind or humane. Uh, nope, same thing, back where we were. And you know what? I think it's going to cost him big time. You know, I think it's already cost him big time. Look at the poll numbers, pulling him away. The 65 plus population, like never before, is, is pulling away with him. Uh, I think Joe Biden now is up 21 points with the seniors. Uh, that was not the case in 2016, where he was up 8% with seniors against Hillary Clinton. Okay, I, and I, I know you want to get to others, but let me add that I hope that at some point in this show, uh, you know, we talk about the Wegman article in the New York Times this morning, where he reminds us that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how popular, um, you know, Trump or Biden it, uh, are in the, in the national uh, voting. It matters how the electoral college works. Um, and so a, a lot of his loss of popularity uh, may not affect the result. Okay, good point. Hey, Stephanie, what were your thoughts of the last week? And what was, in your mind, um, the most appalling and or not appalling, but just uh, remarkable? Uh, I'll take, I'll retract the word appalling and say remarkable. Well, um, appalling is what uh, suits me, I, I think, um, because once again, I feel that the media is letting us down in a sub substantive way, a major way. And that is, um, I am pretty much concluding um, that Trump did not have COVID. This is fake news. I have not heard one, and I'm not watching everything, but I haven't heard one broadcast about fake news because there's no other explanation for why there's no data. There weren't any x-rays. There is well, no- there I, is I, I, I think there are x-rays. I think there are CT scans. The administration is overtly choosing not to share them with, with the public. They're not sharing them with, the, but that this is so uncommon and so off the mark. And he's gone out to Navy Med and just uh, taken it over. Well, it's not- it's, But Stephanie, can't you say the last four years is so uncommon? I mean, really? There hasn't been one norm followed through the last four years of this presidency. Uh, this is just add one more to the old Christmas tree of absurdity. Well, why isn't the press pressing on the National Naval Medical Center. It's now the National Military Medical Center. Yeah. Why is it that they're not going after this? If you have nothing to say, why do you have nothing to say? Is this an order from the commander in chief? Because well, you have to remember the doctor, Trump's personal doctor is, I don't even know if he's a real doctor. He's a doctor of uh, osteopath. Once again. I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know what his true credentials are, but here's well, one thing I do know. When you have, um, 
the staff of Walter Reed around him, uh, there was like six or seven doctors in that video. They're not going to lie. They're not going to lie to protect Donald Trump's uh, uh, condition. And those are not top docs. I did not see gray hairs. Not that military doctors can get that old. I did not see top. And that guy, he's got his baby. I don't want him if I've got that COVID. He's too young. No, something is fishy. And I just don't think that the, that the media is doing what they need to do. And it just falls into his pattern. Now he was needing a distraction. Hey, this is a good one. I think Melania got it, actually, really. And that sparked a thing there. And he has shown absolutely None of the features, I, I know they say, oh, he looks like he has that. They've come a little bit close to, to examining the, the factors, the reality, but he, nobody has done enough okay. to get. It. All right. Well, we'll we're going we're gonna to ponder on your, your words on that one. Uh, Winston, <laughs> Winston, what's, <laughs> what's, what's your comments about the most remarkable thing in the, since Donald Trump has been diagnosed with COVID? And do you think he has COVID? Boy, you know, the, the, the reality is that when the first that I heard about it, my first thought was it's a lie. And based on the 20,000 plus lies we've been getting, it's pure distraction um, to, to, uh, after the, the horrid debate and uh, everything else that's gone on uh, in the last, well, I don't know, a week ago, it was so long ago, I can't even remember. So that was my first thought too. And I think when half the nation says, is this actually true? I, I'm not sure I believe it. And then you kind of weigh the evidence. You say, well, he was huffing and puffing. Did they teach him to huff and puff when he goes up the stairs? Did he have it or not have it? How about a full disclosure of his medical records? How about an independent test of somebody else going in? A, a doctors of osteopathy. They are real doctors. I, I had one. They're great. So just giving a plug for osteopaths. But there's something that, that I felt just... Um, what are they lying about? What are they hiding? If he's indeed in mortal danger, he needs to transfer power over to, uh, you know, Reverend Pence. That's a, something that needed to be done. We need to have full information. We're not going to get it from this White House. But you know, if you think about the statement, and I, I, I understand what you're saying about whether or not he really has it or had it or has it. Excuse me. Um, that is one heck of a statement that we doubt whether the President of the United States, for a minute or for a half hour or an hour whether he's really contracted it because of, of the complete 20,000 lies through this administration. And the lies all around him. So, I mean, at the end, at the end of the day, I do believe that he did have it. Um, my more, more concern, some things that I want to just throw out there for people that might be watching, Forbes has an, an article up that, you know, if you take this, this steroid that he's on between two and 57%, well, that's a pretty big range, have adverse psychiatric reactions ranging from mood changes to frank psychosis. There's a whole bunch of other things in there. Well, let's talk about pre-existing conditions as you say those words. Well, you know, I mean, those other things. I think the other one, uh, the former CIA director, uh, Hayden, uh, says that he's a danger and he's voting for uh, America. He's voting for Joe Biden. He says he doesn't agree with Joe Biden's policies, but he is actually, it's not a vote for Joe Biden. It's a vote to save the country. He was joined by... Five yeah, and, and Brennan has just come out with his book, and that's somewhat draw dropping up some of the passages in his book. I, I, I the well. 500 former security national security uh, officials endorsed Biden. I, I mean, just the fact that you're having those sorts of folks and military endorsing another one, as far as Trump having COVID, well, the White House started selling, I think, on Sunday in the gift shop, Trump's defeat. Trump defeats COVID commemorative coins before he even returned to the White House. So. That's an interesting one. I mean, we wish him well if he has no one. No, of course we we want. Uh, he's the president. We wish him well. We don't uh, wish wait, harm on wait, anybody. Wait. I mean, regardless of his policies, we don't want a, a, a medicated person also if there. I'm heartened by the news that uh, older voters were fleeing. Um, uh, and NBC News reports 23 percent shift in a month. Yeah. It's it's yeah. massive. This is a. Uh, the first time that we've seen one episode, and I believe it was the debates, shifts everyone. But on the other hand, you have Eric Trump claiming that his dad right. literally saved Christianity. Um, and I want to point a couple more things. Uh, even in the Rasmussen poll, Donald Trump is down by 10. That's his favorite poll that he quotes. And the last one is from Joe Biden, where he says, 
at, uh, at his Gettysburg uh, speech that he just gave, again, we're house divided. He gave a sane, sober, reassuring speech that we were Americans, we will get beyond this. We have been bamboozled and beaten and abused for the last four years as Americans, no matter which, what you believe. We're not better off than we were. We can come back together again once we get this absolute distraction out of the office. Yeah. You know, it's, I appreciate you mentioning the Gettysburg Address by Biden, and I'm going to go to, to Cynthia with that, that comment of yours. Cynthia, uh, Donald Trump and the administration has gone to great lengths to portray Joe Biden as unstable, um, almost feeble. And uh, did you happen to check out the Gettysburg Address from uh, Joe Biden? I did. It was wonderful. Did, did it confirm the narrative that Donald Trump has been trying to paint Joe Biden in the corner that he's f mentally incompetent? I mean, if anything, Donald Trump's looking quite mentally incompetent with these bizarre things that he's doing. Well, not only for the last four years, but certainly in the last week. Absolutely, without a doubt. I loved that at that Gettysburg um, speech that he gave. It was so inspiring. I cried through part of it even just to see somebody that acted with that kind of level of presidential um, mannerisms and words. Just everything about him was what not just what he said but how he said it how he carried himself all of the things that i want in a president are the things that he showed during well, what it showed to me as a rational person that i think the nation is desperately looking for at this time and place uh in the united states and i guess i'll go to jay's uh, earlier comment about um you know, it looks like the polls are shifting. It looks like uh, even seniors and women are, are, are pulling away from Donald Trump. And the question is, regardless of the popularity vote, uh, particularly the popular vote in the swing states, does somehow Donald Trump steal the election with the electoral college process, appointing his own personnel to, to over, oversee the ballots to, and to oversee the electoral college uh, process? Are you concerned about that? Because I certainly am too. <laughs> I'm terrified of that. And I'll tell you, this is the main thing I've been talking about for a very long time. He is going to steal those votes. I don't want anyone to- How does that happen? How, can you imagine how that might take place? Because I can't, I can't figure it out. There are so many states that are only voting by electronic process. There's no paper ballot. There's no paper backup. There's no way to even- Okay, so somehow those votes get switched. Yeah, we won't know. This is the thing that, that shocked me the most and I found the most horrible this week. And that was not just what I first heard it from Don Jr. When he came out and he said, I'm calling for our or army of supporters to go to the polls and right. make sure that nobody cheats. Then shortly thereafter, Trump posted something that said, um, my army of supporters. So they're, they're really- okay, well, that's that's voter intimidation. While, while voters are standing in line, you have these people that have no business being there uh, right. standing in line with them. So that's voter intimidation. But how does that how does that actually switch a vote? Well, he's not exactly asking them to just go in and be in line and harass the people in line. He's telling them to go inside the polls, which isn't legal. But how many things has he done that aren't legal and gotten away with? Right. Okay. Then you have all of the corruption in the Republican led states that can't be controlled. We don't know what they're going to do. We know that they've got state secret you know, secretaries of state that are perverting the whole entire process. Look what's happening in Texas, just as an example, you know, limiting the number of boxes that can be done. The other states that are are making sure that every absentee ballot has to have a second signature, a witness. Um, all of these kinds of things that we're seeing in the Republican-led states that tell me our votes are not safe and nobody's doing anything about it. Not, I agree with Stephanie. Why aren't the media talking about this? Why aren't all of America talking about this? How do we protect our votes to make sure that they are counted honestly? Okay, thank you very much, Cynthia, as always. 
Hey, Jay, I didn't read that article this morning, but um, are there any points that actually in that article that actually get at how possibly votes could be switched out or is it or is it just voter intimidation and uh, certainly putting up more roadblocks for voters so that's more cumbersome to to get into the voting process? I, I did not read it in entirety. My sense of it, though, was um, that he was limiting his concern to the Electoral College in general. Um, and that means that uh, some states will not respect the popular vote, um, even if they should send their electors to Washington. It means that uh, in some states where it's in the law, the, uh, the governor may reject the popular vote and send different electors, or the state legislature may turn it upside down and send different electors. And so if you look back to the, I think it was Gelman um, uh, three weeks ago in the Atlantic uh, where this, he said this election may, may break democracy. That was, a, that was a very interesting and very scary article where he went through um, all of the possibilities or at least many more of the possibilities for how Trump could screw around with the ballots. You know, it starts with suppression. It starts with gerrymandering. It starts with intimidating people. Um, it starts with, the, the, you know, the slow bell in the post office, which I don't have my ballot yet, by the way. And I know they were supposed to go out this week. Uh, I think we're going to add a slow bell on getting the ballots and another slow bell on getting the ballots getting back. back yeah. And yeah. some states, uh, as Cynthia mentioned, uh, in the state of Texas, one collection box per county, per county. It's a huge state. People are going to have to drive hundreds of miles to drop off their ballots if they want to do that. So you got all these things. And then you got collect collection problems. And then you got this whole thing with the Electoral College, that was the article this morning. Um, and I think that if you take us all together, it almost doesn't matter what the popular vote is. So we're being distracted with, uh, you know, the polls, thinking that the polls reflect what's going to happen here. Not so. The polls have a long way to go before they elect a president. And Trump is trying as hard as he can every day. And in a funny way, all this with the COVID now, you know, that's a further distraction as Cynthia mentioned from the press, actually focusing on the bottom line. The bottom line is whether he stays in power or not. And by the way, haven't covered the fact that he could dispute everything. He's got thousands of lawsuits pending right now. And he could, he could use any of them and try to create a tumult well, me, to go to his let Supreme Let me ask Court. you this, because COVID would be the least attractive thing that you would want to divert attention to, not away from. I mean, COVID is his you know, his Waterloo, if you, if you will. Why would, on earth, would he want to change the narrative and focus on COVID that's only going to make his poll results far, far worse? Yeah, I, I, I do not uh, ascribe to, uh, you know, Stephanie's position. I'm sorry, Stephanie. I think he really had and probably has COVID. And I don't, I don't think he's using this as a fake thing. Jay, Jay, on the other hand, degree... I want to add that I think he had it long before that test. Well, that... I think I... He... I that's, think he had it at the time of the debate or before. That's um, what I want to go to. I think he has it now. Um, I, and, and, you know, he wants to minimize it and all that. He wants to look strong. So those people who, need, who are hypnotized by this apparent power, you know, will see him as, as the leader. Um, bottom line, though, it, it really doesn't help him. Look what happened. People, people realize that he's not so strong. Uh, and if he gets more sick, you know, you're going to see a lot of defections. We saw what up till now, some eight or 10 people have announced they tested positive. I believe it's way beyond that. I think the government is actually non-functional right now because all the people in positions of power who have it, and it's more than they are reporting. So yes, the press isn't doing a job, um, but at the same time, we're still under tremendous threat from the primary problem, his attempts to stay in office. Well, we have a gentleman by the name um, Jason Miller. He was his, his campaign advisor. I mean, he was on the, the you know, the, on the uh, circuit this weekend, you know, saying that, you know, the administration is responsible and being responsible. Uh, all their rallies where people were nose to nose, elbow to elbow. They all had the options to wear masks. They all were given hand sanitizer. They were all given a temperature check. And, you know, we did such a great job on making sure that things were safe for all of Don Trump's rallies. But we know Donald Trump at that same rally, um, particularly the one in Henderson, New, New, Nevada, where he said uh, to, to the question, are you concerned about contracting COVID here at this rally? He said, no, I'm way up here on the stage. I have no concern about it, basically. I mean, the exact quote is, 
I'm safe up here on the stage and the stage is very far away, so I'm not concerned. Is this why we're seeing a, a shift in polling that people are going, Donald Trump doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about his followers because he doesn't require mass. And as long as he's protected, um, to, to heck with all his administration and the people he's in contact with. He's the super spreader. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Uh, I think bottom line is that he's, he's weak, he's stupid, and he's a schmuck. And that mm -hmm. case is still going on in the Supreme Court to be decided within the next 10 days or so and whether the Americans for, uh, the Affordable Care Act is, is going to be uh, declared unconstitutional, leaving tens of millions of people without uh, any benefit to deal with a disease. There was another article in the Times this morning that, that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, the cost of taxpayers a lot of money to have him in the hospital over the weekend. And if you don't have the Affordable Care Act and you have pre-existing conditions, all those problems for millions and millions of people, you know, they're going to get COVID. We know that. That's happening. It's happening increasingly to more people in more places around this country, including high-level people. They won't have any insurance, man. Yeah. It's, okay. it's going to be the biggest disaster imaginable. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Hey, Stephanie, we're, we're winding down as usual with time. Um, is Donald Trump and the administration being perceived as, uh, to what degree are they being uh, perceived as being responsible for a number of thousands of deaths, but more importantly, that he's continuation of spreading the virus uh, with his, you know, lazy affair attitude about masks and uh, showing up at events. Um, I just think that my fellow Americans can stand there. That woman stood there at the bottom of the stage while he told her, I am safe because I'm up here, you're not, you're getting a little close. He even said, I'm a little, you know, you're getting a little close. Why, why is it this is just not coming across? So that's what the media is there for. Why isn't that being run? I'm okay. saying, I'm getting, and then the other issue that I have with him is this, this confusion about tests. Okay, there are masks, all right? There's social distancing, okay? There's ventilation, all right? Those are uh, remedial. Those are preventatives. The test is not. <laughs> so the entire time, these people are coming out and going to meetings and people are saying, well, you don't have your mask. Why don't you? Well, I just got tested, so I'm okay. The point is that he's not okay <laughs> because the test was only up to when he took the test. So they don't understand that the test is an assessment it's a marker, has nothing to do for keep, with keeping you from getting virus. Right. So, so that has been totally mind boggling. The, the, the media's not hammering on how El Stupido that is. The other thing is of course, this whole business with our electors. Why aren't we getting on the, on the TV? I wanna see who are the electors, which states have these, uh, everybody has to definitely vote for the popular vote. Who are the states that don't have to do that? Who's appointing or are these electors elected or are they appointed? Who's appointed? This is what I'm talking about. Again, we're up against this. Like yeah, I, I would agree that we are, the media is missing the boat on a lot of things and I guess in our last few seconds here. Um, um, Winston, um, any advice for Americans between now and other than, you know, take a chill pill in the next 30 days? Uh, you know what, as, we, as I've said, get a good source of, of, of wide media coverage from sources that you can trust. I mean, you may have to go to the BBC or Deutsche Welle if you feel like you need national news, but there's a lot of really good reporting that that is going on. Uh, you know, you sent, right you sent a great article. You sent a great article on a ranking the biased versus the non-biased media sources, and I, I I forget what source that was, but that was a really great um, kind of a scientific approach to what what sources, be it in print form or media form, uh, video form, was uh, least biased to the most biased. Well, and, and also, if you're going to be an informed American, you have to read something that's longer than three paragraphs. You need to read the stories that are 10 or 20 pages long so that you can really get a, a, a reasonable grasp of what's going on. So educate yourselves, educate your friends. Um, don't count on whatever's coming over the airway that's being fed to you. You go after the news that you need to see. And, you know, we wish all people good health. We don't want them to be affected by this virus. 
probably the best way they can do that is become informed, vote in mass numbers. We're seeing a shift now. I I'm, I'm think the sharks are smelling blood in the water, honestly. I think we're gonna see even more, uh, just very large scale changes in the upcoming week as far as uh, the masses getting on board and saying, yeah. enough of the chaos, enough, enough, enough of the drama, enough. All right, Winston, you get the last word for this show's, uh, this week's show. I'd like to thank you, Winston, Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Thank you for joining us. Join us next week, Wednesday, 11 o'clock, Trump week. I'm Tim Apicella. Aloha. <laughs>